uh, Cambodia has a really sad history of, of mass genocide, public executions, and if you want to, uh, if you're here, you cannot not get a deeper insight into that history. I'm here in the capital city of Cambodia, Phnom Penh right now. So yesterday for the first time I actually crossed a border uh, to another country uh, by road rather than by flight and it was a whole experience. Uh, so I took a bus from Ho Chi Minh City to Phnom Penh. This was about like a six, seven hour journey. And uh, so the bus actually takes you through everything. So you reach the border crossing. You reach the Vietnam um, exit immigration point basically and they take your passports like well basically this guy was running around with a stack of passports from everybody from the bus. Then you exit uh, from Vietnam, then you cross over the, a little bit, then you enter the um, passport strapping zone in Cambodia, then uh, it's a whole process but it was a lot of fun, it was an experience in itself. So I arrived here yesterday evening and now when you talk about Phnom Penh, the one thing that you absolutely should not miss out on is the S21 prison tour and the tour of the killing fields. Uh, Cambodia has a really sad history of, of mass genocide, public executions and if you want to, uh, if you're here you cannot not to get a deeper insight into that history. So I think a uh, uh, trip to the S21 and Killing Fields is a must. So that's what I'm doing on my first day here. Uh, I have, uh, you can do this by yourself or you can book it with a group. I've, I'm actually doing it with my hostel itself. So we're about to leave. Um, it's gonna be like a half day affair where we go to S21 and then the Killing Fields. We're all aware of the Holocaust of Nazi Germany and other mass genocides that happened throughout history. But very few of us are aware of the Cambodian genocide that took place between 1975 to 1979. Khmer Rouge, a highly autocratic communist party led by Pol Pot, was responsible for mass killings of Cambodian citizens that wiped out more than one-fourth of the country's entire population, that is close to 1.5 to 2 million people. I think the S21 Museum has been one of the most uh, heartbreaking things I've ever seen or experienced. Uh, in the museum you get to see everything. Uh, photography is not allowed inside the museum for obvious reasons, so I will not be showing you uh, things from inside the museum uh, because it's too graphic, to be honest. Uh, it's the first time in my life that I've walked through a museum and I've been crying the whole time because what happened here is beyond imagination. What happened here is it defies all morals and integrity that we think human beings have and uh, here they have preserved the torture chambers, uh, the uh, remains of people uh, who died in the mass genocide, the photographs of all the people, men, women, children, the torture instruments, the cells, mass detention as well as solitary confinement and like you literally feel like you're taking a walk through what actually happened here and um, it breaks your heart. The regime forced people to empty cities and regroup in agricultural communes along with massacring intellectuals, professionals and monks. The manner of these public executions remains till date one of the most gruesome events in the history of humanity. S21, a former secondary school turned prison, was one of the main sites where prisoners were held for torture before being sent off to the killing fields for execution. I'm here right now at the Chong Ek Genocidal Center, also known as the Killing Fields. Uh, the prisoners, um, the prisoners that were actually uh, tortured and held at the S21 prison were then later brought here to these killing fields to basically kill them, to exterminate them using violence, using iron rods, bamboo sticks, axes, all of these different torture equipments that are actually mass graves here, uh, which were discovered, uh, which held thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, people. They've actually excavated all the sc skulls and bones and teeth and they've actually preserved it. You can see, uh, three, four of these preserved mass graves, you can see uh, remnants of skulls, bones, clothing of victims and yeah, yeah this has been a really heavy day for me, really heavy day. 
I highly recommend that if you only have a single day to spend in Phnom Penh, uh, you slot out that day to visit the S21 prison and the killing fields because uh, yeah, this is really hard hitting and this is something you should not miss out on. You can easily do it in one morning uh, and get done with it by lunchtime. Uh, I highly recommend you buy audio guides at both these places. Uh, the audio guides are really, really well explained. They're available in all major languages. Uh, so it, the audio guides really help you to understand the story of what exactly happened better. The entry tickets along with the audio guides to these two places are $6 and $5 respectively. So it's not a lot. Uh, you might have to take a tuk-tuk out from the city especially to come to the killing fields which are about a 45 minute tuk-tuk ride away from the city and the tuk-tuk uh, if you ask a tuk-tuk to stay with you the entire day it will cost you close to $20. I'm here at the National Museum of Cambodia right now. It is housed in this beautiful red colored structure and it's actually in the heart of the city. So um, this museum actually houses a lot of um, artifacts uh, dating back to the pre-Angkor, Angkor and post-Angkor era. And uh, you have sculptures, you have um, different like utensils, kitchenware, um, uh, artifacts from the royal family belonging to the royal family you have the local art like traditional art and all of that and uh, it's actually an interesting perspective into the mythology and the whole religious aspect like for me especially it was very interesting because the uh, a majority of Cambodian people follow Buddhism but um, there's a strong influence of Hinduism as well so when you're actually looking at all the sculptures or all the mythological stories you see like this um, nice mix of Hindu and Buddhist stories together. So for example, there are sculptures of like um, uh, Shiva or Vishnu or um, uh, Ganesha, but like they are made in like a very Buddhist way. So it's uh, like a really nice confluence of the two religions. Uh, so yeah, it was actually an interesting thing to see. It co the ticket will cost you uh, 10 US dollars. Uh, I think uh, if you're really interested in like history uh, and like art then maybe you make a stop here. I had an extra day that's why I did it but if you don't have as much time I think this is skippable. You can um, if you have to pick something between the S21 or this I highly recommend you go do the S21 instead but if you're really interested in art and culture and history then maybe yeah you can make a quick stop. It's a quick museum actually you can cover it easily within like an hour. So that's how I spend my first day in capital city Phnom Penh. I hope this video makes you read a little bit more about Cambodia's history and visit it. I will be back with the next episode that will show you the more fun side of Cambodia. I'll see you there. Until then, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.